Welcome to Third Party Transformer News from Retro Robot Radio for the date of June 20th, 2015. As you may know, this is the week that BotCon is going on in, in Chicago. So there's been lots of reveals from third-party Transformers news. And I'll try to go through what I can as of the time of recording this. What doesn't make it into this episode, I'll have to wait till next episode. Alright, first we're going to be taking a look at Bold Form's uh, triple-changing Megatron figure. I'm told this is either this is a name Gladius. And here you can see him in robot mode. This looks like a color test shot. His tank mode. It could be a render here, I guess. Or a uh, gun mode. A new company called DNA Designs has been teasing a replacement set of fists and heads for the Combiner Wars Devastator figure. Also, Dr. Wu has been showing off his extending crane for the Combiner Wars hook which actually extends to like about three times its original length, unlike the Hasbro version of the crane, which is just one solid piece. There'll be more about Combiner Wars Devastator in this episode later. DX9 uh, has been showing off the final prototype pieces of their Hulky figure. This is their Legends class uh, Devastator combiner. Uh, we've seen before the upper body parts. We didn't see the legs for uh, uh, Scrapper and Mixmaster before. And here you can see them all in their robot mode and alternate mode. And honestly, these guys are about the size of the original G1 uh, Devastator from the looks of things. They're just done with a little more articulation and modern engineering, which is kind of neat. Uh, Fans Toys has been showing off that it's going to have some um, color variations of their version of Masterpiece Snarl that are coming out. One's going to be a chromed up version. They're also going to make, be making this uh, G2 Red version of the figure and a kind of black and chrome version of the figure. So I guess they put enough uh, investment into the character that they want to make some uh, variants. A new company called Generation Toys has announced a figure called Gravity Builder. This is their version of the Combiner uh, Devastator. Now, from the looks of things, this is a bit shorter than the Combiner Wars figure, but a lot more detailed, and it's basically six Voyager-class high-quality figures. Some people are saying they want to use this with their Masterpiece displays. And you can see here, he does look pretty cool next to Optimus Prime. Uh, basically, he's the robot versions of the Constructicons do scale up really nicely with Masterpiece figures, obviously, because they made them gigantic in the uh, TV show when they combined, for no apparent reason that I can figure out, that uh, it doesn't quite scale up to how Devastator looks on the scale chart compared to Optimus Prime, but hey, for those of us who don't want our uh, uh, Devastator to have sudden growth when he grow when he combines this works great or if you do want him to hey, be a lot bigger than the other characters you could also use this with uh, Chuck or even Legends figures and just say hey he's a gigantic devastator uh, here he is compared to the Warbatron Verticus and you can see he is uh, about the same size and I've been told by people online who claim to be in the know that the design team behind Gravity Builder and Warbatron are pretty much the same guys but I have no proof of that myself. You can see their alternate modes looking very, very G1. They actually got uh, uh, Mixmaster right for his alternate mode. And hey, look! Elbows! Hasbro! Pay attention! Elbows! We got another look at some of Iron Factory's upcoming uh, IDW and War Within inspired Legends figures. Here's their Prowl inspired figure. And that's their version of Overlord. We got our first look at the uh, gaming cards for Hydrophone. That was a Kickstarter created uh, figure for the Kaiju Chaos game. Uh, I'll be getting one of these myself. 
Uh, looks pretty darn cool, and if you want a little uh, Legends type figure for gaming, based on a Transformers fan character, this is for you. Maki Toys showed off at BotCon the, their version of Reflector that'll be coming out. Looks like it's going to be coming with alternate faces for the team, as well as a tiny mini Reflector uh, for you to hand over to your Masterpiece figures. They also showed off their Pandinus the version of Scorponok. Uh, this is a test shot, not colored uh, to the final colors yet, but definitely looking farther along than the uh, prototype we've seen before. Maki Toys also showed off this uh, prototype of their version of Hotspot. Um, this will be the torso for their Defensor inspired combiner. And here we can see the alternate mode for it. They also showed off these two um, Masterpiece uh, Inferno and Grapple inspired figures. And they are looking very nice. Um, they're a bit smaller than MP10, like they should be. And uh, here you can see them in alt mode with their extending ladder and crane arm. And here's an AR with a color test shot of the Maki Toys version of Masterpiece Hound. Mastermind Creations showed off their upcoming Seraph Prominion figure, who's their version of Nova Prime. Still not completely done, but definitely coming along nicely. And we also got to see their version of the... Uh, Anarchist figure, I believe this is, who is their, um, the, the guy who turns into an electric chair, I believe. I'm not really an IDW Comics uh, follower, but uh, it's nice to see that some characters besides Optimus Prime and Bumblebee are getting toys these days. Play With This 2 uh, revealed this shocking new image of their Boneyard character and announced that they are doing a Kickstarter remix. There will be actual prototypes of Boneyard and Jet Strike, and they've also mentioned the Wastelander figure, who is the uh, Beast Wars Dinobot. Jet Strike is, of course, uh, Pretender Starscream, and uh, Boneyard here is Pretender Grimlock. Um, so he is very interesting in detail. They added some new weapons to him that weren't in the original release. Uh, of uh, Pretender Grimlock with the uh, dinosaur skull shield and the uh, uh, Jaws axe there. And I think we're going to be looking forward to seeing how that Kickstarter does. Uh, according to what they said on the website uh, for Play With This 2, the Kickstarter will uh, center around the Boneyard and Jet Strike molds. That's the Grimlock and Starscream, and we'll have all the different recolors of those molds as their initial options for the figures. Here you can see some renders of some detail of the parts that will come with a Boneyard. He's going to have a sword and gun. I believe the sword is uh, inspired by Generation 1 Grimlock sword. The gun is inspired by Pretender Grimlock's rifle. The uh, shield and axe are new designs. The uh, It has a human head and a helmet as well as a more robotic looking head. It looks like a kind of stylized version of the robot Grimlock's head, and it will have alternate hands, ones that are open and ones that are closed with a 5mm port. And you can see it also will have lots of 5mm uh, ports on the back. I'm told that the uh, skull shield will actually have both a 5mm handle uh, that pulls out and there's a 5mm hole, and then below that there is a ball joint for if you want to use it as a head on a figure. So you're going to have that option as well. You can see a little detail on the uh, skull shield here. And it does come apart. Those are all 5mm ports that it's designed to be built from. So you can even use those as uh, separate weapons or other put other parts on the ends of the, the uh, skull if you want. I'm going to take a moment to talk about Takara and uh, some of their re announcements recently because they do have a bearing on some third-party Transformer figures. Takara uh, just this weekend announced that MP27 would be Masterpiece Ironhide. And as you may know, several companies have also announced Masterpiece Ironhides in development. So uh, what will this mean for those figures? I don't know if that means they'll be canceled or remodeled. Personally, I think that uh, if these companies want to continue with their Masterpiece Ironhide molds and try to compete with Takara, 
the best way they could compete is to not compete. Instead of releasing Ironhide and Ratchet, Ironhide and Ratchet, Ironhide and Ratchet, why not release theirs in Diaclone colors or Shattered Glass colors or paint it up like a Scooby-Doo van, something. That way people will want to get theirs just because it's different uh, from Takara. Anyway, it just seems to me like it would make more sense to make something different than everyone doing the exact same one. It would guarantee you at least some sales. Whereas if you did an Ironhide, everyone's going to buy the Takara Ironhide. Also some other news from Takara. Uh, seems that uh, they've been releasing some details on the Takara version of the Combiner Wars Titan uh, Devastator. And Takara's deciding not to cheap out the way Hasbro has. They're actually adding more articulation like elbow joints. They're adding G1 style pistols and G1 style heads and a lot more uh, paint decos to the figures than Hasbro is. Um, I can even see that there's paint around the wheels there for hubcaps. And I just find it amazing that Hasbro is going so cheap on this expensive box set. These figures are ending up costing more than a Voyager each, and there's six of them, and you're getting such cut-rate, hollow, articulationless, articulationless pieces of garbage from Hasbro. And the reason why I'm mentioning it here is because a lot of these uh, add-ons you're getting from the Takara release are add-ons that third-party companies have already started trying to make for Hasbro. So I don't know if that means companies like Dr. Wu or whoever that we're going to be offering upgrades are just going to say, oh, forget it, just buy the Takara version, you don't want the one that's complete crap. But uh, it's good to know that uh, there's the options out there. Honestly, I'm going to be skipping this because I don't really want a uh, gigantic uh, Devastator either way, and I don't buy uh, figures that cost over $100. Sorry, it's just not in my budget. But uh, nice to know that there are options. A uh, exclusive to BotCon uh, this year seems to be a one from Toy World. It's a two-pack of Orion and Hegemon that are done up in the Marvel Comics exclusive colors. So these are colored like the Marvel Comics uh, character models of Optimus Prime and Megatron, and they come in kind of a Marvel Comics-inspired box. Here you can see the actual figures, kind of made to look like... Uh, in the colors of the what you see from the Marvel comics. Uh, I'm a little disappointed Megatron doesn't have the uh, scope in the uh, stock, but I guess he didn't in the comics either, so hey. I got a little more detailed information of the Unique Toys version of Masterpiece Blur. Uh, looks like they're kind of uh, modifying the sculpt a bit. Uh, get some better uh, G1 accurate details on Blur here. And also, it not only will come with his regular gun, his target master, it will come with, it looks like, the transforming cog for, cog for Metroplex. So that should be uh, fun to have them run around and try to get back to Metroplex. X2 Toys showed off its XT009 add-on for the Generations Orion Pax figure. This is a trailer, a little uh, high Q or Jinri inspired companion and a helmet or head possibly for the Orion Pax figure to make it look a little more Optimus Primey. Yeah, this is kind of inspired by the trailer that he did uh, tow back in the IDW comic books in a flashback uh, where Orion Pax was transporting some prisoners with Alpha Trion. And uh, yeah, it does open up a bit like the original G1 uh, trailer for Optimus Prime. It has a little repair bay in it. X-Transbots showed off uh, another test shot of their uh, Beachcomber-inspired figure, and he's looking like he's coming along nicely. And we also got some more uh, details on the X-Transbots version of Masterpiece Cyclonus. It will have a Target Master regular gun and a little teeny Galvatron pilot, so you can simulate that one little scene where you can see Galvatron inside the cockpit of Cyclonus when he's flying, I believe, to Earth, Autobot City back in the Transformers 1986 movie. I'm going to take a little time to look at some of the reveals that came out of BotCon this weekend that I've seen so far online. Um, particularly, I'm going to take a look 
at what kind of things third-party companies could do to improve on what things we've seen. Uh, first of all, we'll be taking a look at the uh, Bruticus figure they announced for Combiner Wars. Uh, looks like Bruticus is suffering from the same uh, crappy hands and feet that every Combiner Wars figure has. So obviously Perfect Effect or Non-Neff or anyone else who's manufacturing the replacement hands, there you go. I also noticed that it doesn't seem to have Onslaught's rifle. Um, you could just buy the Generation 1 Onslaught rifle, I suppose, because it is a 5mm peg on the original toy. Or someone could be make one that's maybe a little bit larger. Uh, looks like there's also, hey look, they're ripping off uh, Fans Project by making a little a uh, Decepticon Shockwave for uh, uh, Bruticus to hold instead of the, the rifle. Um, no surprise on that uh, Vortex is going to be uh, based on the uh, Alpha Bravo. Uh, someone might want to make extra weapons for him. I don't sure if they would work there because they don't have anything to peg on the side. Let's see. Yeah, Onslaught, no rifle. Uh, this is the biggest uh, opening there for if a company was looking to make a Combiner Wars uh, compatible figure would be to reshell this or come up with something new to make Blast Off an actual shuttle instead of a repaint of Firefly and Quickslinger. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it makes sense that Blast Off in the military being a military jet Okay, yeah, that does make sense, but if you're looking to make it the more G1 accurate, he should be a little brown space shuttle. Yeah, and uh, Vortex there. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty good. Could use uh, some of his G1 weapons. Brawl is missing the uh, big guns that he has, the two big cannons out the back. That could be taken care of probably with the... Uh, the perfect effect add-on kit, because those uh, feet uh, add-ons do turn into two big cannons. I don't know, hope there's some sort of 5mm ports in the back. Uh, I'd also like to see this repainted as uh, Quake, maybe, in the future. That'd be kind of a neat one. I heard, I heard rumors that uh, the Fun Publications guys at Subscription Service might be doing some uh, 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 combiner, and that would be a nice one for them to see, if we could see this as Quake, and then uh, the helicopter mold is Spinister, and then the jet mold is uh, Needle Nose. That would work out real nice. Oh, yeah. Swindle. He's okay looking. He just doesn't look like the Swindle I think of. Uh, he is missing one of his guns, so there's an opportunity for anyone who wants to add that to the uh, figure. And hopefully we'll be seeing... Uh, you know what? That whole chest shield is just the wrong color, isn't it? So there's another opportunity. Someone wants to make a accurate G1 chest shield for Bruticus. Now it looks like the Collector's Club, uh, possibly subscription service, is going to be making their own version of Bludgeon as the torso based on the Onslaught Combiner Wars mold. Um, yeah, now that's not going to look a thing like Bludgeon in any mode. Not as a robot, not as any of his vehicles, not as a pretender shell. So there's good opening there if someone wants to create an actual skull and a samurai helmet, sword. In fact, if you're lucky, you might be able to get away with using the head robots add-on kit blood for it. Uh, some of the other exclusives that are going to be coming out of the club. Uh, looks like they're going to be making a Skywarp version of Armada Starscream. Honestly, I've not uh, found that much of an interest in these. Because I think the original Armada toys are just fine and actually better because they're the decent size instead of those little hollow deluxes with no deco on them. Uh, looks like they'll be doing the Rodimus Prime and RC from Only Human as G.I. Joe figures. And that's pretty darn cool. Um, not sure what kind of accessories those guys could use. Windsweeper here, based on the Generation Skydive mold. Um... Could use some chrome guns if anyone wants to put those together. Uh, Ruckus from uh, the Generations Off-Road. Again, missing his uh, over-the-shoulder cannons. Now this Optimus Maximus figure that's going to be coming out. It's a, another Combiner Wars combiner made of repaints. Um, 
looks like obviously could use the hands and feet replacement. Uh, the torso is Voyager Battle Corps Optimus, who I guess is, uh, it says here the Wave 4 Deluxe figures are based on uh, Kojin Ono's original G1 designs. Um, okay, so these are all going to be looking like the versions of toys that we didn't get. Um, way to go there, Hasbro. Um, but uh, obviously, Voyager Battle Core Optimus kind of looks like an Ultra Magnus. Kind of. So if you want to use them as that, that's there. Um, it uh, could use uh, the little clip that I've already seen people on Shapeways and such make for the Rodimus figure that allows you to clip its weapon onto his back and gives him the little fins. Or I think there's also some other companies that are already starting to make ones that break apart into a gun and a backpack. Uh, obviously the Deluxes could all use the actual G1 weapons instead of, you know, Ironhide having an axe. How about giving him his actual pistol or uh, shoulder-mounted missiles for Mirage and Prowl? Would it all be cool? I'm sure you could get a better weapon for Sunstreaker there too. Looks like there's going to be a leader class Combiner War Starscream that comes with his crown. So obvious ones that uh, you could have for that would be better arm-mounted cannons, um, fillers for all the hollow bits that Hasbro forgot to fill in because they're getting senile with old age and can't remember to finish an action figure lately. Um, and uh, I don't know what other figures. Obviously this thing is uh, not painted very well and could use a ton of repro labels to make him look right. So there's all that. Looks like we're going to have a whole bunch of Legends coming out. Autobot pipes from the Legends Optimus Prime. You know, a lot of people complained about Huffer. I thought it was actually an okay thing. I don't mind having the minibots in this scale. Uh, Decepticon Shop Shop is a good idea. It's from the Shrapnel Mold. Uh, Shockwave, of course, great for a Legends-sized uh, G1 Shockwave that acts as a gun. Buzzsaw, huge major fail. Oh my god, it's just horrible. I hope they transform that wrong, because if that's right, I don't want to be right. So evidently there will also be a leader class uh, Skywarp in 2016. Um, so that's cool. It's uh, nice to have. They actually went through and did the full set of the Seekers. Um, I honestly questioned whether they would, because most of the time when they come out with uh, Seekers, they'll get two and then the third one's really hard to get or impossible i'm sure this is going to end up being like short run and we're never going to find it except at uh, a uh, discount store in albuquerque one day there's going to be a ton of them for ten dollars each or something ridiculous but uh, hopefully we'll all be able to have a nice leader class seeker trio someday now evidently there will be a voyager class skylinks uh, looks like uh, it's okay skylinks uh, hopefully it's not uh, hollow as all heck, and uh, and this is going to be a Combiner Wars torso as well as being a dragon or whatever it is, and a space shuttle with a box on the bottom, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what this uh, is going to look like in detail. I wonder if there's anything else you can do with it, could anyone come up with any fan modes? I doubt that it's going to be able to come apart into the actual two units, unfortunately. So hopefully if uh, uh, Machine Boy is still making their version of Skylinks, they can still make it uh, actually work to where it breaks apart into two separate robots and it will still be worth getting. Whereas this one is more for the combining torso. Wheeljack, of course, looks like he could really use some weapons upgrades. That's, the, you know, a sword. How about uh, the... Uh, immobilizer and a couple of missiles and a rocket launcher and you know it's yeah there's lots of room for improvement here hound here seems to share design is that with a swindle maybe so it's a good hound i like it um obviously he's still missing his shoulder mounted rocket launcher something that hasbro seems to have become allergic to lately smoke screen of course we know he'll have the repro labels to look more like a g1 smoke screen and hopefully we'll even get a uh, pair of shoulder missiles for him. And for uh, Trailbreaker here, which is good to see, we, he, we definitely have his name back now. He's looking nice. I uh, wouldn't mind seeing the Diaclone recolor of him in the future someday. Um, could use that little shoulder-mounted uh, 
thingy that or you know the for, force field projector that he has in G1 toy. Maybe some missiles, you know, the stuff that actually makes the figures worth uh, getting, all the details, you know, the stuff Hasbro forgets. And here you can see that Sky Links combines with the other Autobots to form Sky Rain. And it looks like they have uh, a Legends Retgar mixed in with this, uh, but I don't see him anywhere on the combined form, so I'm not sure where the heck they threw him. And uh, why they have all Season 1 and 2 Autobots mixed in with Skylinks, but uh, hey, whatever. Um, actually, I do kind of like the idea that we're going to be getting a Wheeljack specifically, because I would want to combine a Wheeljack, Ratchet, uh, and, you know, Grapple and Hoist, if we ever get those guys into um, into a big combiner, make him like Repairimus Maximus or something. Um, yeah, Hound, always interesting. Smokescreen, yeah, those are good guys for a combiner, I guess. I can see a lot of people trying to keep the, all the uh, guys from one year together, though. Uh, we still don't have Wind Charger, we don't have Jazz, and we don't have uh, Sideswipe. And those are three of the Autobots from the uh, Masquerade combiner. Why are they skipping them? I don't understand that. Anyway, uh, yeah, obviously this could use the uh, better hands and uh, feet that are plague all Combiner Wars combiners. Yeah, and uh, Legends Retgar, I don't know if they could add... Uh, someone needs to make a tiny little Shapeways axe for him to hold. You know, just do that. Uh, looks like the TFCC uh, ex membership exclusive figure is going to be Universe Ramjet done on the Generations Deluxe mold, which I see absolutely no reason to get. I have the original Universe Ramjet, came with all the Minicons, and he's Voyager sized, and not a chintzy little uh, hollow robot. So, uh, yeah, not, not interested in this one. Uh, rather keep the real Ramjet, but this does mean he'll obviously be coming back in the fiction because they always work their uh, exclusive membership figures into the fiction. Oh look, found more pictures online. We will be getting a Spinister, and it looks like they'll actually be uh, recoloring Scoop's companions to be his target masters, which is kind of nice that they threw those in there. I still have the Master Shooter collectibles uh, target masters for them, but uh, these might be nice too. Oh look, and Needle Nose with the, uh, I kind of predicted that one as well. Looks like we're not getting Quake, but we are getting Spinister and Needle Nose. Guys, somebody needs to do Quake though, honestly. Uh, this is nice though. I like it. Um, yeah, not much to add on to this for third party that I can think of other than maybe repro labels. And if you don't like the Target Masters, get the Master Shooter ones. Well, we got some feedback on last week's episode. Dinobot Maximize wrote back that he loves the idea of the rubber tires for the Combiner War Stunticons. And he's sure that Yoshi from Transmissions will highly approve. Um, he would like the Dinobot Combiner to be named The Beast, which I don't think qualifies under my uh, question because I said th names that aren't official. I think that actually is the official name. But... Uh, he does also like that uh, the Voodoo Ratchet figure, and he did hear there will be an MP version coming soon. Yeah, well, that's actually covered in today's episode, so yeah, it came real soon. Uh, he likes the trailer and genre, genre slash high uh, from uh, X2 Toys, and he looks like he'll be getting those. Um, Dinobot Maximize also said he looked at the... Uh, uh, Wiki Alpha page, and he noticed there was nothing on DACA toys. Don't worry there, Dinobot Maximize. I went and added that for you. Uh, Yinim Mai says, That third-party toy list is awesome. Well, thank you. And Storm Rider X wrote, Not crazy about the uh, wings on carry. They are too big. At least three different third-party hardheads now. Uh, I am a fan of combiner gift sets, and something alluring about when you open a 20-inch combiner gift box. Yep, uh, he also wrote, nice idea on the wiki third-party Transformers. Well, thank you. Also, you may notice that I posted one other video since last week's uh, episode. It was a review of the latest issue of the Transformers Collectors Club uh, magazine and comic. So check that out if you're interested. 
This week's screen capture is the mechanical King Kong created by the evil Doctor Who in the 1967 classic King Kong Escapes. This week's news brought to you from the pages of tformers.com and TFW2005, news read by Matthew Ignash, stop by wikialpha.org to read more about third-party Transformers, check out the Facebook page of the third-party TF Crashers, and then come on by the Retro Robot Radio YouTube channel and subscribe. <laughs>